Okay, we are live. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm your host, Josia Tamira Crossley. I help women who are struggling with the impacts of chronic stress to stop self-sabotaging patterns and use the wisdom of their bodies to navigate their lives with more ease and grace so they can reclaim their feminine power, joy, and vitality. And today's episode of Wellness Wednesday is part two of our four-part Navigating the Darker Emotions series. And today we're talking about transforming shame into grace. I'm so delighted to be joined this afternoon by my dear friend and colleague Zoe Wren, sex and relationship coach. Hi, Zoe. Hey, Josia. <laughs> so excited to be here. So happy you're here too. So Zoe helps women awaken their sensuality and reclaim their power through pleasure. She has an awesome group program call for women called Courage to Thrive, and she also works one-on-one -on -one with couples and individuals, helping them create deeper connection, more passion, and greater fulfillment in their relationships. And so I'm curious for those of you who are listening, you know, who are drawn to, to be here with us today, is shame something that you already know may be blocking you from expressing your fullest, most authentic self, either in your relationships, in your career, or maybe some other area of your life? So I'd love to hear from you, if uh, whether you're listening live or to the recording, please comment, yes, I know it is, below if you already know shame is a thing for you. And if you're like not sure, then I really look forward to just, you know, being with you here today and, and through this conversation maybe you'll be uncovering something that you weren't even sure was there before so um yeah and I mean I feel like shame if we're really looking deeply at ourselves it's it's a thing for almost all of us um and I know Zoe you in your work that you do you know working with sexuality and relationships I bet you see shame come up as a block for people a lot is that the case it is it sure is and I just want to, first of all, start off by saying thank you for having me here and thank you for doing this series because I think it's so healing for us to know that we're not alone, especially in these darker emotions. You know, it's it's so hard to be with those emotions and then feel like we're not supposed to have them and feel isolated and feel like there's something wrong with us or we're too much or we're not enough. So um, I just really thank you and commend you for gathering us together to you know, to, to make this real, to make this human, we're all human, we're all going through these things together. So um, yeah, shame is a huge part of sexuality work. It's, it's basically there's no person walking around in Western society who doesn't have shame around sexuality. Hmm. Um, and you know, shame, it lives in our bodies. So anytime you wanna improve something to do with your wellness and your body vitality, you can bump into it. So, and I think that's what you know from your work as well um, around coming out of stress and total vitality and radiance and health is that we, we can't avoid our emotions. Exactly. Yeah. And wow, I just love what you just said about like, there's no person walking around in Western civilization who doesn't have some level of shame connected to their sexuality. And that's, that's powerful, you know, to recognize that, that, you know, in our Western society, like there's so much trauma that we're not even aware of and that, that you know that we may be carrying around you know specifically with shame and yeah yeah so, yeah and shame is it's it's particularly one of those emotions that we're hiding from because it's actually kind of the mother of hiding from all the emotions you know one of the things we're most ashamed about is our emotions in general mm -hmm. And um, and so, yeah, it's very incipient. It's very subtle. And we're ashamed of shame. Mm. That's really what the problem is. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And, you know, thanks to people like Brene Brown and all the research that she's been doing, it's something that I think we're finally learning how to really be with and how to help each other with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So the shame of shame. That's yeah. That's something <laughs> <it is. laughs> yeah, like yeah. we can't get to it. We can't even access it because there's so much. There's so much like ideas that we're not supposed to feel. We're not supposed to be feel this way. We're certainly not supposed to feel these like difficult or darker emotions, including shame, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and like you and I have been talking about sometimes about how isolating that is and how our society 
values independence and stoicism. And I think that's, isn't that one of the main reasons why we're all so stressed out Mm -hmm. is because we're trying to do something kind of unnatural, actually, you know, it's like, to me, I I feel like it's going to crash in at at some point. Um, How, you know, how do you feel in your work if you're not, if you're trying to work and broadcast and write blogs and if you're not in touch with your emotions and, and your shame? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and especially, you know, when it comes to, and I'm sure this is true for you as well, when we're working with clients who are, you know, accessing these, these deep places in themselves, if we're not, uh, you know, as, as therapists, as coaches, if we're not like accessing these places in ourselves and really working with, you know, what is there, you know, what's, what, what's there when we come into our bodies, um, and, yeah. and when we think about like, yeah, uh, both working with people one on one, but and like putting ourselves out into the world in a bigger way, absolutely, yeah. So um, I'm curious what you would say, Zoe, about like how do we recognize? Because I think that a lot of people in Western society are maybe walking around with shame, but not aware. They're like, oh, I'm fine, you know, or I'm good with that. Um, I'm not. You know, so how do we recognize, like, what are the signs either in ourselves or in other people around us in our relationships? Um, what are the signs? How do we know that shame is there? It's a good question, because like you said earlier, you know, it, it may trigger us into shame and then we'll just dissociate and go out of our bodies. <laughs> so we might not recognize it in each other. Mm-hmm. And it's um, it's something that's so uncomfortable for all of us. So here's Brene Brown's definition of shame. It's really good. Shame is an intensely painful feeling of not being worthy of love and belonging. Mm. Mm. You know, if you just like listen into that and feel into that, it's it's so fertile. It's so rich, isn't it? But it's so uncomfortable. It's like this feeling of being, if I say this or I do this or I have this experience, I don't belong to the tribe. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, or I'm I'm being disconnected. I'm being cut off. Um, I don't mm-hmm. belong as me mm-hmm. with my needs, my desires, my feelings. Mm-hmm. I have to somehow skirt around them and try to do something else so that I so that it basically goes down to like a survival level. So it's such a rich, such a deep emotion. Um, so how can you tell that it's happening? <laughs> so. Um, yeah, Brene Brown again. She's you know she's the one. She's the expert on this at the moment. That, that quote actually, can you just yeah. say how she defines it again? Yeah. So okay, shame is an intensely painful feeling that we are unworthy of love and belonging. Shame is an intensely painful feeling that we are unworthy of love and belonging. Yeah. So it comes down to that belonging and like being loved. You know, believing that we're we can be loved as we are, right? As we are, like in our authentic. Exactly, exactly. And that's, and so if if someone's in that, you know, you're going to, what you're going to see on a physical level is not wanting to make eye contact. Mm-hmm. So already sort of distancing, disconnecting self from the group, mm-hmm. um, face going red, maybe, you know, a little bit of signs of like anxiety. And so it's that feeling of disconnecting physically um emotionally some of the more maybe politically correct emotions that might be being sensed are things like embarrassment um guilt remorse those are kind of different forms of shame mm-hmm. so if you're in one of those territories either physically or emotionally you yourself or someone around you shame is probably present mm-hmm. yeah That makes total sense. That makes total sense. And like, who hasn't felt that before? (laughs) Definitely definitely comment below if you've, if you've felt that before. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's the, that's the whole thing about it is the the way to actually heal it is to, is to, the first thing is just to name it. This is one of the emotions, you know, getting ready for, um, getting on with you today, Josie, I was, I, for some reason, this image popped into my mind of, you know, how there's different forms of the Buddha, like there's the happy, smiling Buddha. Um, there's the Buddha that's like laying on his side, you'll see, like, even in some of the temples in Asia, like in Thailand, there's reclining Buddha. 
And then have you seen that Buddha where he's leaned over completely, like over on himself in a sitting cross-legged position? Hmm, I don't know. Okay, so some he's called the grief Buddha. Hmm. But you know, it's like all these different ways of being and all these different feelings, they're all the Buddha. They're all emotions. Feelings are feelings. So actually shame is no worse or better or stronger or lesser than any other emotion. It's just the way that our cultural upbringing is, our societal programming at the moment. Yeah, 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 exactly. Beautiful. I love that. I love that. It's beautiful. (laughs) 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 Because, you know, actually, like my favorite, I love like there's all these different definitions of enlightenment. And I think in the West, we often define and we think that enlightenment is like when we finally will get to the place where we get we're just like blissed out all the time and like emotions are not an issue not a problem anymore you know and my favorite definition of enlightenment is um from Chogyam Trungpa and what he says is actually that um enlightenment is when we can allow you know whatever emotion whatever energy is happening in any given moment to just move through us you know without, without contracting around it without without clinging to it and just to allow that but it doesn't mean that we don't feel all all of these things right exactly and so, yeah yeah exactly. And so, yeah and so what would you say you know for somebody who's like really struggling with shame or maybe who is just like as they're listening to this right now like noticing like oh yeah that's that's really there for me so what would you say is like the most powerful way to start to work with that or how, how do you to work with that so yeah so so when you're in shame, when anyone's in shame, there's basically two main fears. Mm-hmm. So one is fear of being abandoned. Mm-hmm. You know, the tribe doesn't like me. I don't fit in. I don't belong. So that's the first fear that's there. And then the second fear is fear of being judged. Mm-hmm. And so if you are with someone else, um, being able to reassure them that they're not being abandoned and they're not being judged is the most important thing. And the way that you can do that, I'll I'll circle around to like how you do that for yourself, but (laughs) it's kind of all connected. Like if you're able to work with your own shame, you're able to hold the space for others. If you're able to hold the space for others, you're just more able to hold shame. It's like a muscle. You're building like a muscle. Right. And this is key in your work, like in relationships to be able to relate, right. To not just to our, like our lovers and our husbands and wives and you know our those kind of relationships but like any relationship to be able to navigate with with people like to connect with other people we have to be able to first work with with what what's in ourselves yes for sure for sure to be able to be authentic in authentic relationships it's it's really a lot about getting real with your feelings and taking down the mask and so um If you're with your partner or in a relationship or with other people and shame is present, the first thing to do is name it, Mm -hmm. even if it's just to yourself, just to go, oh, that, you know, that's shame. Name it. Okay, write this down, everybody who's listening out there. Definitely write this down. So name it. Yeah, just name it. Yeah, name it. If you see it around you for yourself, it's like that's shame. Let's not be ashamed that there's shame here. Right. So really recognizing it. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like saying that's anger or this is grief, this is joy, this is ecstasy. Is it, I think that's one of the emotions that you have on the series, is it? Uh, ecstasy, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's one yeah. of the hardest emotions to feel, right? Joy, ecstasy, rapture, <laughs> like, whoa, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to tie this um, back for people um, who've listened to um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I did a Facebook Live on um, a video on um uh, the the recognize the RAT acronym right recognize accept transform and so what Zoe's saying here you know that that is the same you know to name it right to recognize like this is actually shame right? yes to, to yes yes yeah. yeah good that's really good I like that recognize accept transform yeah so it's like in naming it you're recognizing and accepting it kind of all in one right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just breathe. And then the next part is maybe that's the acceptance part is just breathing and being with it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then the transform is, um, I like this, I'm using your model now. <laughs> uh, so with shame, the transform is, it's basically like I was saying earlier, allaying the fear of being abandoned or the fear of being judged. So it's being able to say to yourself or another, 
um, about being abandoned, right? Um, I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here. I'm right with you. I'm here with you. I see you. I see you in this. I'm here. Yeah. Here I am. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And can we right with, here. like our tendency with ourselves is to want dis- to dis- dissociate is what we would call it in, in the work that I do. But like, yeah. you know, we want to like, we feel it and we're like, I am out of here. I do not want to feel this. Yeah. And so there's something powerful, right? About when we turn towards, you know, instead of running, we turn towards that, yeah. you know, what is, what's happening. Turn yes. towards it. You said, I love that. Breathe and just be, you know, just be with what's exactly. there. Exactly. And in that sense, we're not transforming shame. We're actually allowing it. Yeah. I yeah. would say shame is actually the transformation rather than the thing to transform. In in my work with sexuality, when shame comes up, it's actually a doorway. It's a doorway into the body. It's a doorway into the emotions. So if I can just sit with a client and say, I'm right here, nothing to fix, nothing to change, nothing to repair, everything's fine. I'm not going anywhere. That's when the tears can start to flow and that's when the emotions can show up and then we can do our work. Then we can really start to connect. Then we can be really ourselves in relationship. Right. Yeah. You feel the relief of that? I felt your breath like when I was saying that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so, so such a relief to just be able to be, you know, be in that space. Right. Just even, even, even now, just, yeah. And any of you who are out there listening, just, uh, either to the recording or, or listening with us live right now if you're if you can feel that just definitely definitely comment like yeah I feel it yeah wow. yeah it's it's so simple actually that's really all there is to it two steps just naming it mm-hmm. and then just staying with it mm-hmm. you know just it's one of the feelings feelings are feelings you cannot change feelings <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah yeah. That's, us. that's our, our, our expression, right? And for us to be, you know, if we can get to the point where we can allow, allow the tears to come or just, you know, whatever the authentic expression is yeah. of, of the emotion, you know, you know, whatever that is, it could look di- really different depending on, on what it is. But if we can allow that to come, yeah, um, you know, then that's, you know, that's really where, where the transformation can happen. And it's, it's like you said, there's nothing else that's needed. So transformation actually, it's not actually a step that we do. It's not something mm-hmm. we do like, no, I'm transforming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we can do it that way. We're like, we, we're like, I have to transform this thing. And it's like trying to actually trying to transform it is, is almost like trying to get rid of it. Right. Yeah. Which is the same as running away. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's shameifying shame. No, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, be here, so I need to transform it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's such a vicious circle because we're not supposed to have shame. Then we're ashamed of having shame, and you know, it's just and and we're all like playing into it. It's like it's like this little secret we have. Yeah, like I don't have shame. No, neither do I. No, neither do I. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's 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 so hard. It's it's really so hard because it's it's such an uncomfortable one like you know just on a like on a bodily gut level um when i was doing my um sex and relationship coach training we had shame day it was like one whole day where we we worked on how to we you know shared in our groups and shared with each other and one of the things that i took away from that um was also that you know when you hear someone else's shame it's probably going to trigger your own let's just say that So that's, that's okay too. But just to know that again, just name it. This is happening. I'm feeling triggered. I'm feeling this yucky feeling in my belly or, you know, I'm feeling like, Ooh, I'm a little to the side of my body. So those are other signs, right? That you're leaving your body a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, but one of the things that helps with that as well as just being with it is to remember that when you're in the presence of someone's shame, it's just a story they're telling themselves. Mm -hmm. So there, it's very understandable for whatever story each of us has. Mm. You know, people have shame around different things, and it's handed down through our family lineages as well. Right. But it completely makes sense for a person's life experience and history and background. And 
it's not fully who they are. It's not, it's just part of the story. So that's, that's a huge piece too. And I remember in that shame day, you know, that our instructors said, you know, after you hear these stories, you know, don't go around going up to people going, oh, you know, wow, that's a huge thing you walk around with, or, you know, wow, that's your story. Because it's just, it's like, like you said, Josiah, just an emotion passing through. And so if someone is telling the story of their shame, it's like, that's their process. And that's a feeling, but it's not all of who they are. It's, it's just a part of who they are, just a part of who we are. Exactly. No, I love that. It's so important. And it's so important to remember that, you know, when we're hearing it from someone else, but also when we're into it in ourselves, right? Like when we're, you know, when we encounter this, because I think that's another place where we can get stuck as we feel the shame or the anger or whatever it is. And then we identify with it. We're like, oh, that's me. That's me mm -hmm. that is this shame or this pain or this, you know, whatever it is. And so if we believe, you know, that we are, you know, if we believe the story, then we can really get stuck in it and we can just kind of spin around like in the washing machine. But when, right. when we can, like you said, just kind of, kind of breathe with it, step back from it also, you know, to take that step back and go, Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. You know, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, what I'm curious in your practice, how you help people um, be able to feel and allow, but not get stuck in the story. Cause there's sort of, both are important, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I'd love to. I'd love to hear hear that. You know that from you as well. I'm I'm guessing it's probably probably pretty similar. But um, you know, so one of the ways that that I find is really helpful for myself has been really transformative for myself. And and oh, so I use this to support my clients. Is when we can start to track um, what's happening in the body. When so when we feel the emotion, when we can just you know, it, it's literally like, like taking a step back with our consciousness. So rather than being like, like identifying with the contraction, with the pain, with the, you know, the sensation to actually just like take a step back. So into that inner witness place and then start to notice, you know, oh, look, my mind's telling me this story and I'm, you know, here's the emotion, but it's not just the emotion. It's like, what's this, the emotional signature in the body? You know, where am I mm -hmm. often, with with um with shame or you know the other dark emotions we start to we contract around the 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 um, front of the body you know because this is where we we hold most of our trauma is in the front of the body so the, mm. the belly the you know and it's all this this beautiful fascia like around that's really like our core you know the throat also mm -hmm. is a, you know, up into the tongue and the mouth um, but all the way down you know from basically from the perineum up up through the belly and into the tongue. So it's, it's uh, you know, coming into just, you know, really feeling, okay, so where is the emotional signature in my body? And to start to just track that. Like, you know, and I tell people, like, just like you were tracking an animal in the forest with total curiosity, you know, rather than this place of like, oh my God, it's so horrible. Like, just get curious, get really mm -hmm. curious. You know, what what is that? What's happening there? And, um, you know, and when it gets, to be too much when it gets overwhelming we can shift to more like the limbs the outer body um we can find places like our you know like okay my pinky finger actually feels just like safe and okay right now we can also <laughs> look around ourselves around the room okay yeah i'm safe here there's actually no one like pointing their finger at me and looking looking down and 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 shaming me you know because and, and this is actually something i really wanted to talk about with you as well, Zoe, um, is like, how do we, how would you say we, like, why do we take on shame in the first place? Mm hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 well, I think it's, it's fear of, it's those two fears. It's fear of being judged or fear of being abandoned. And, you know, if, if our, the one who came before us, who raised us has said, you know, if you go into that part of the woods, you're going to, someone's going to hurt you or you're going to get tangled up in those brambles and caught, you know, that we've been protected in that way and, and programmed in that way. So, um, so we're, we're afraid of the places that are dangerous for us. And, um, you know, it's dangerous to be judged. It's dangerous to be abandoned. And so I think, I think a lot of it's passed down and, um, you know, to so to literally to feel these emotions, we can feel like we're going against survival, like it can feel yeah. almost counterintuitive. You know, it's definitely breaking down culture, yeah. <laughs> too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's say, you know, we're creating a new culture when we're living from this more somatically wise place and, and connected place. 
Mm. Um, but it's, I think that's where it comes from is, is it's a protection mechanism. It's a strategy that is actually not working effectively. Right. Yeah. It's like, we feel safe there and comfortable there, but it's not really safe and comfortable. It's not actually like allowing us to be, you know, awake and aware and, and, and expressing our full self in our lives. And, and uh, connect and also connected, you know, because yeah. if, if we're, if we're in shame, we're not able to empathize with other people. That's a, that's a big thing that I work on in relationships. Um, it's uh, actually Brene Brown says that shame and empathy are two ends of a scale. So if you're, you know, really in your own shame and unconscious of it, it's very hard to empathize with other people. Mm. The more that you can empathize, the more that you're, you know, you're comfortable with your spectrum um, of, of all the emotions, but of shame. And so, and so it's, uh, it, you know, it's a real obstacle in relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so such an important one to dive into if we want to be able to, have solid quality connections and relationships and feel loved, feel accepted. So it's so interesting how healing is kind of like that, you know, how it's like we have to find it in ourselves, that love and acceptance. And like we have to work with the, the dark emotions, the shame, before they, it starts to be reflected in our outer world, before we start to be able to make the connections that, um, you know, to some degree will reflect that back to us. At least have you found it's that? It's so true. It's the secret of all relationship coaching, right? Is it's actually the relationship with yourself. That's that's all we're working on. <laughs> it's not other communication and other skills, but yeah, it's it's so true. It's everything radiates from out from how we're doing with our own process, and um, we magnetize to us, you know, what we need for that, what we need for ourselves. So mm. it's so important. Emotions are the glue. They're the glue. Feelings are the glue. It's what helps us connect to ourselves and others it's mm. it's our guidance system oh i love that emotions are the glue to connect yes. us to ourselves and others that's powerful absolutely that's powerful. So we have to allow ourselves to feel <laughs> 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 and let me tell you shame's going to come up just in that <laughs> right. yeah exactly exactly well now we have some more tools to work with it so thank you so much for for jumping on here and joining us for today uh, it's been really wonderful to have you and um, I'm wondering if you can just share how people can get in touch with you if they're interested in just learning more about your work and um, yeah what you're up to yeah awesome it's really cool to be on here and thanks again so much for having me and um, if you're interested in my sex and relationship coaching you can go to my website which is www.zoeren.com, Z-O-E-Y-W-R-E-N, and um, zoeren.com. And you'll see on the right, I'm offering right now a free love empowerment session. It's a 30-minute coaching session, and it's just a chance for us to look at what your ideal relationship would look like, what you're really dreaming of in love, and what's missing, what's in the way, um, and in that session, I pinpoint and work with you to find one tool or um, direction that will help you move toward what you really want and who you really are. So you can be fully expressed, fully empowered and fully embodied in your relationship and your life. So um, ZoeWren.com, Z-O-E-Y-W-R-E-N. Awesome. And I just popped that link up in the Facebook comments there. So people who are listening should be able to to just click that and check out your website. Thank you so much. And that session sounds so juicy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, yeah. So next week, I'm going to be interviewing Irene Lyon. Um, Irene Lyon's a nervous system specialist and therapeutic coach. She helps people release their deepest traumas from their nervous systems, allowing them to finally heal from chronic mental, physical, and emotional connection uh, conditions that they've tried everything to fix. Irene's amazing. I've done her programs a couple times. Um, she uses uh, these tools to also work with entrepreneurs to help them break through mental, physical, and emotional blocks that arise when they're taking big leaps in their businesses. As a result, um, you know, she's able to help people just create a, a huge ripple effect across the planet. She's intensively studied and pra uh, the practices and the work of Moshe Felden Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais, Peter Levine, the founder of Somatic Experiencing, and Kathy Kane, the founder of Somatic Practice. 
Irene has a master's degree in the research uh, in the fields of biomedical and health science. And um, she regularly appears on podcasts and online summits, teaching all things nervous system health, healing, trauma, neuroplasticity. And so next week, we're blessed to be welcoming her here for part three of Navigating the Darker Emotions series. And Irene and I are going to be talking about navigating fear. Um, and just another note, we're changing the name of the show from Wellness Wednesdays to Body Wise Wednesdays because I just was feeling like Wellness Wednesdays was a little too generic. And we're really, you know, we're really all about um, using the body to navigate towards uh, more well-being and, um, and just more um, uh, optimal health in our lives. So Body Wise Wednesdays. So join me next week for Body Wise Wednesdays. And thank you so much again, Zoe, for joining us today. And definitely check out Zoe's website. Get in touch with her through www.zoeran.com. Link is below us here in the comments. And this is Josie Atamir Crossley on Body Wise Wednesdays. See you next week. Mwah.